Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Stefano Gasparini, and I'm talking from Ancona, Italy. First of all, I would like to thank Olympus people for the kind invitation to participate at this symposium. It's a great pleasure to be here together with the guru of interventional pulmonology, bronchoscopy, interventional pulmonology, that is my friend Felix. I will focus my talk on the use of ultra-thin bronchoscope in the transbronchial approach to peripheral nodules. I will show you a few slides of introduction and a series of clinical cases of our experience. This is my conflict of interest disclosure. Well, let me show what is known about the transbronchial approach to pulmonary nodules. The first thing is that a system of guidance is required since blind samples of bronchoalveolar lavage have a very low sensitivity in this clinical setting. Fluoroscopy is the classical guidance system, as Felix already told us. It has been utilized for many years, and it is still the most used guidance system worldwide, even if in the last year, new guidance system have been proposed, as you can see in this slide. However, even if these new guidance systems seem to provide better results, especially for small lesions, unfortunately no large randomized trial comparing fluoroscopy with the new system has been performed. Another important factor that affects sensitivity is, of course, the size of the lesion, but this is true even for percutaneous approach to peripheral nodule. And what about the sampling instrument? Does the sampling instrument influence the sensitivity? There are different ways to sample through the bronchoscope uh, a peripheral nodule. You can see here the different sampling instruments that uh, have been used in the different study. But uh, uh, the majority of the studies performed using different sampling instruments show the better sensitivity of transbronchial needle. Here is uh, our experience uh, in an old study performed in our hospital in more than 1,000 patients, and you can see that transbronchial needle aspiration has a higher sensitivity in comparison to biopsy. The reason uh, may be explained by the fact that the needle can penetrate into the lesion even if the surface of the bronchial mucosa is not affected. The value of transbronchial needle is confirmed in this meta-analysis where transbronchial needle aspiration showed a higher sensitivity in comparison to biopsy. Another important factor that affects the outcome of the transbronchial approach to pulmonary nodule is the relationship between the airways and the nodule. If there is not a bronchus leading into the lesion, it is difficult to reach the target. And this is the reason why whichever guidance system is used, sensitivity is generally no greater than 75-80%. Well, in this context, what could be the role of ultra-thin bronchoscopes less than 3 mm in diameter? Well, if uh, we search ultra-thin bronchoscope on PubMed, we will find 100 12 results, but only 29 studies are related to the diagnosis of pulmonary nodules. Well, analyzing these studies performed with different guidance systems, I was really surprised to see that just in one study, transbronchial needle aspiration was used and not in a systematic way. Well, Recently, Olympus produced a new ultra-thin bronchoscope with a diameter of 3 mm and a working channel of 1.7 mm. Through this working channel, it is possible to introduce a new flexible needle 
expressly designed for the approach to peripheral lesions. The rationale is that if the nodule is outside the bronchus, like in this design, the needle cannot reach the target in any way using a conventional bronchoscope. With an ultra-thin bronchoscope, it is possible to approach the nodule and bending the tip of the scope. Bending the tip of the scope allows the needle to pass the wall and to penetrate the nodule. This is uh, the background, the rationale. With uh, this consideration, we started a randomized study comparing a standard with ultra-thin bronchoscope and using transbronchial needle. To reach statistical significance, we should include 140 patients. We are at 50. So I cannot show you the results, but I can show you some clinical cases. All the cases that I will show you concern asymptomatic patients where the nodule was occasionally found in chest X-ray or, ch or CT scan, performed for other reasons. The first case is a nodule of the left upper lobe. You can see the ultra-thin bronchoscope reaching the nodule and the needle penetrating into the lesion. It was an adenocarcinoma. This is a, another case of a left upper lobe nodule reached by the scope. You can see the scope and the needle penetrating into the nodule. And again, the diagnosis was adenocarcinoma. This is, is a nodule, very peripheral nodule of the lingula close to the pericardium. Fluoroscopy shows the ultra-thin bronchoscope approaching the nodule. And in this case, it was not an adenocarcinoma, but it was an hamartoma. This is a very small nodule, one centimeter inside of the middle lobe. You can see here the ultra-thin bronchoscope reaching the nodule and the transbronchial needle taking the sample. And it was an adenocarcinoma. A similar case of a very small nodule of the middle lobe. You can see the needle and uh, the histological sample that show an neuroendocrine tumor positive for synaptophysin. It was a carcinoid. This is uh, another very small nodule of the middle lobe. And you can see, it's unbelievable, but the ultra-thin bronchoscope can reach this small nodule and you can see the needle penetrating into the nodule. And again, synaptophysin was positive and the histology diagnosed a carcinoid again. This is a right upper lobe nodule. And you can see the flexibility of the scope and of the needle that can reach in a very angulated way this lesion. And diagnosis in this case was adenocarcinoma. Again, a similar lesion, a similar case of the right upper lobe, and you can see how it's easy to bend the flexible scope and the needle, and it was possible, even in this case, to make diagnosis of adenocarcinoma.
This is a very difficult case. You can see very small nodule of the left lower lobe close to the descending aorta. Even in this case that was approached with the ultra-thin bronchoscope, diagnosis was adenocarcinoma. Well, the conclusion of uh, our preliminary experience is that the use of an ultra-thin bronchoscope with a flexible needle could be a way to improve the diagnostic sensitivity of the transbronchial approach to peripheral pulmonary lesions. As Felix already said, fluoroscopy as a guidance system has the major limit that a smaller lesion can, could not be visualized. Well, if the results of our ongoing study will be positive, such kind of approach could be employed also with more, more advanced guidance system like uh, Ibus Mini Probe or Conbin CT. So the question is, is better, I can provide evidence that DIN is better. This is my picture three years ago. Now I have two years more, but 25 kilograms less, and I can demonstrate that DIN is better. Thank you.